Hello everybody and welcome back to the next video in this series on the 13 colonies. In this video we're going to be talking about the colony of Carolina specifically. Now the colony of Carolina was originally chartered or started in 1629 but that document that charter was actually left unused. No one actually used it for this area of land. The man by the name of George Durant and Nathaniel Batts would be the first documented settlers of the colony of Carolina in the early 1650s. These men would be the ones that were first recorded to have made some inroads into this area and actually settled here in the colony of Carolina. After King Charles II would reclaim the throne in England, he would charter this colony to eight Lord's proprietors. And he would do so because these eight men actually supported him reclaiming the throne in England. So he wanted to reward them. And he would do this in 1663. That being in the year, we credit the true founding of the colony of Carolina. So you're going to hear that name, the Lord Proprietors, repeatedly throughout this video. Now, the Lord Proprietors were expected to pay yearly rent. So they themselves are not going to have to pay that rent. They would pass it on to the settlers to pay it in the form of a quit rent. The problem with, though, is that the colonists who were already there in this colony of Carolina were not used to paying taxes. So therefore, this is going to be an issue when the Lord's proprietors forced them to do this. So the Lord's proprietors have done this as a business venture, but they're going to see that this business venture is going to become something unmanageable for them. Now, the town of Bath will become the first official town in the colony of Carolina in 1705. It still very much is a small town, and various parts of it are still original to that time that you can actually visit today. The next town is Newburn. It would become the second official town in the colony of Carolina and become the first colonial capital in 1710. So while the colony of Carolina was a colonial capital before it becomes a state of the United States, its capital was in Newburgh. And the two major counties or local governments here in the colony of Carolina were established as Albemarle in the north and Bath in the south. And getting back to Newburn real quick, Newburn is at the point where the Noose and the Trent Rivers collide, therefore creating a perfect area for a town to be established. A general assembly would be started, featuring settlers and other politicians who would make decisions for the colony. So the local day-to-day -day government would be created and housed here in a general assembly. Now the picture on the left is a modern picture of what the building of the General Assembly looks like today. Taxes and religious politics would pit the Carolina colonists against the Lord's proprietors. As I said before, the Lord's proprietors would realize this business venture of theirs would become somewhat of a headache. A rebellion known as Culpeper's Rebellion in 1677 would break out and involved where a group of colonists would capture a royal official by the name of Thomas Miller. Miller would escape to tell the settlers, and this would become a chaotic situation in which Culpepper would be pardoned for his role in this rebellion. And this is just one example of these colonists leading a revolt against British trade laws and snare for season the government. And in Gibbs Rebellion in 1689, a settler did not win the governor's seat, therefore creating the feeling that this election may have been fixed, and therefore 
someone from the outside was running the show instead of someone that was local. And then there was Carey's Rebellion, which happened in 1711. Thomas Carey and settlers would fight with the Lord's proprietors over religious requirements for office. And Carey would be replaced as governor by a man by the name of Edward Hyde. Now, there's already much animosity between the Lord's proprietors and some of the colonists here, and this will only add fuel to the fire. In fact, Thomas Carey and his crew would try to bombard Governor Edward Hyde and others at a meeting house for the Albemarle Sound. He and his crew would fail. They would even hit a sandbar while escaping. So they were willing to resort to violence to get their message across, resulting in great, great chaos. Which brings us to another major event in the development of this colony, known as the Tuscarora War, which would occur from 1711 to 1713. The Tuscarora Native Americans, who historically lived along the Neuse River, including the modern-day Wayne, Lenore, Green, and Craven counties, would dominate this particular area, as you can see here, that they mainly resided in the inner coastal plain. Protective of their land and trade, they would start to grow angry towards these English settlers that were starting to come in more and more. Fed up, the Tuscarora Native Americans decided to launch an attack. And in 1711, they would capture a man by the name of John Lawson, who was an explorer and also one of the co-founders of the town of Newburn. This would create great unrest here in the colony. After a war council trial, Lawson would be killed, while his co-founder would be released. Therefore, this decision by the Tuscarora would lead to the Tuscarora War between the natives and the English. Hundreds of Native Americans would be killed, chased out, and enslaved as a result of this decision. So the Tuscarora War, this major conflict, would help cause the Lord's proprietors to realize that they need to split the colony, so they do. And in 1712, they would split the colony of Carolina into North and South Carolina. That it is as it were it stands today. Tuscarora descendants and others would construct a memorial here in 2013, honoring their ancestors in battle. And that memorial stands today in honor of them and their sacrifice in that conflict. Also happening in the late 16, early 1700s is the age of piracy. And North Carolina definitely has its share of that age of piracy, including a man by the name of Blackbeard, who was a former privateer from Bristol, England. His real name was Edward Teach, sometimes seen as Edward Thatch, and he was known for robbing other ships. And his nickname would be Blackbeard, as you can see here in these paintings. It's pretty obvious as to why he was given that nickname. He supposedly took off from home when he was a young man and became a privateer during a war with Spain and France. And being a privateer was a legal profession back then because a privateer means you were granted permission by the government to go and rob. But becoming a pirate means you were robbing those same ships out on your own. And Queen Anne would allow privateers to rob enemy ships of the monarchy in return with their valuable goods. And after this war ends, Blackbeard would take to robbing ships as a pirate, so he would be out on his own, free of law. In fact, at one point, he would be so successful, he would even blockade Charleston, South Carolina, which was the largest port, the largest city in all of the southern colonies. Blackbeard would even make peace with North Carolina Governor Charles Eden, and he lived in Bath, the Outer Banks, and other parts of North Carolina. So he had a series of hideouts that he could resort to in turn to rest. Finally, though, his story would come to an end in 1718 when he was caught off Rococoke Island, and was killed by Royal Navy Lieutenant Robert Maynard, who was originally from Virginia. 
And the story goes, this was a major, major battle between the British sailors and Blackbeard and his crew. And once he is killed, they take off his head, put it on the bow of the ship, to send a message to others that were considering piracy. This is what happens to pirates. Which brings us to the final part of this story of the creation of the colony of Carolina, and that is involves African slaves being transferred across the Atlantic Ocean to the Americas. And the journey that they would take would become known as the Middle Passage, because it goes right across from Africa, across the middle part of the Atlantic Ocean, to the Americas. And slaves were considered part of the triangular trade. Trading partners included Great Britain, West Africa, the Americas, from the 1600s to the early 1800s. And what would happen here is that you would have um, Africans in Africa selling their own kind into slavery to be transported to the Americas. Great Britain would send manufactured goods to West Africa. West Africa would send its own people as slaves and gold to the Americas. And the Americas would send more natural resources to sugar, rum, and raw materials to Great Britain. So it was kind of a triangular as far as what was happening here. Between 10 to 15 million people would reach the Americas. Some would die from the cramped and unclean conditions on their way to the Americas. There would be one former slave in particular who would actually learn to read and write English, and he would write about his experiences being a slave. Well, that concludes our discussion on the colony of Carolina. Thank you for watching.